With the low poly components in place, you now attach them together as one object. You then unwrap the texture coordinates of the resulting low poly column in preparation to creating the normal maps. Continue working on your scene, or use the file named column unwrap.max you downloaded for this tutorial. You should be able to see the five components that make the low poly column. In fact, you could leave these components separate and treat each one as a different low poly object. However, this means that you would then need to create five separate normal maps instead of just one for the whole column. Depending on what kind of project you are working on, you may opt for this solution. Here though, you will treat all components as one object and thereby create a single normal map. To attach all objects together, start by selecting the base. From the Modify panel, use the Attach tool to attach the other four components. Change the name of the resulting object to Low Poly Column. When you attach objects together, it's always a good idea to double check a thing or two. First, you may want to consider resetting the object's transforms by using the Reset X Form utility. This ensures the object's move, rotate, and scale values are reset to base. This actually also adds a modifier to the stack, so you would want to collapse the stack again to an editable poly. The second verification has to do with face IDs. Since you're planning to eventually apply the same material to all parts of the column, it makes sense that all polygons have the same ID. The face IDs may be different after using an attached procedure or simply because how a model was built. At the poly level, note how the polys on the lower parts are set to ID number 3, whereas those higher up are on ID number 1. Select all polygons and set them all to ID number 1. Exit poly mode when done. Finally, make a last check to see if the geometry is properly in place. If you look closely, you'll notice a small gap in the parts that make the capital. This was not obvious earlier because a decorative high poly part was hiding that gap. Select that border and move it up to close the gap. Next, apply an Unwrap UVW modifier. You will use this to ensure that applied textures are projected nicely and without deformation. Open the UV Editor window so you can simultaneously see the scene and the UVs you are working on. Arguably the most important part, or at least the most visible one, is the main shaft, so let's start with this one. In poly mode, you need to select all polygons that make the shaft, but you need to be careful. The default functionality of Unwrap UVW is to discard back faces, so if you cross-select the shaft, you'd be only selecting it partially. So, make sure you disable Ignore Back Facing before you make your selection. The shaft being essentially a cylinder, use the cylindrical projection in Z to wrap the UV gizmo around the selected polygons. If you need to, make rotation adjustments on the Z axis to place the vertical green seam where you need it. Once that's done, exit Cylinder Mapping Mode so you can adjust the UVs in the editor. Zoom back a bit and enable Freeform Mode. Move the selected UVs outside of the packing area, that black bordered checkered square. This method is not necessarily the only practical workflow, but I find it easier to separate the clusters first and then adjust them one at a time. Let's try the base. You can select all the polygons that make the base like you did the shaft. However, because the base was originally a separate model, you can use the Select by Element option to select that cluster. You could have used this option on the shaft too, as that also was a separate object originally. Again, use a cylindrical projection in Z, and make rotation adjustments like you did earlier. 
exit projection mode and move the cluster. Move up the hierarchy to the capital base. It too can be mapped cylindrically, so go ahead and do that as you have done earlier. The ionic capital part and the top need to be addressed differently. For the rounded part, start by dealing with the facing polygons. For that, you need to disable Select by Element mode. These need to be mapped front to back, so use a planar mapping in Y. Exit projection mapping mode and move the clusters in the editor. In fact, you'll notice that there are two clusters on top of one another. Go back to Select by Element mode and select the middle piece. This also selects the front and back faces, which you can deselect in the editor with the help of the Alt key. This part is a bit more complicated and can be unwrapped in various ways. When I look at it, I see two flat pieces and two cylinders, so that's how we'll approach the problem. Make sure Select by Element is disabled, and then deselect all polygons except those that make the left cylinder. Use a Y cylindrical projection and adjust the rotation so that the seam doesn't divide the cluster. Exit projection mode and move the cluster to the side in the editor. Repeat the procedure for the right cylindrical part. Finally, follow the same principle to project planar mappings in Z on the flat faces. Once you have the four clusters, you can combine them back into one in the UV editor. For that, you first need to align the various edges in X and Y. Zoom in on the first cluster. The horizontal edges seem to be well aligned, but the vertical ones are all over the place, making the stitching of clusters difficult. Switch to Edge mode and make sure Select by Element is disabled. Select a ring of edges and then click the Loop tool to select all vertical loops on that cluster. The Align Vertically option doesn't really help because it aligns all selected edges onto the pivot point location. However, the other option in that flyout align edges in place, which is just what the doctor ordered. Repeat for the other three clusters you created. Once that's done, you can see which clusters belong together by selecting border edges. The corresponding edges on another cluster highlight in blue. You can then select a vertical loop 
and right click and use Stitch Selected to bring clusters together. In some cases, clusters may need to be mirrored. In this case, the cluster representing the bottom flat faces needs to be mirrored horizontally. You'll come back to edit the resulting cluster at a later time. For now, let's finish off the top piece. The top and bottom faces need a simple planar Z projection. For the sides, we'll separate them into four clusters, mapped either in X or in Y, depending on their orientation. In fact, go ahead and adjust the orientation of the gizmo so that it's shooting up at a slight angle. This will help minimize distortion in that flat area just below the top lip. Repeat for the other three sides using either the X or Y projection as needed. Once you're done, the next step is to look for possible texture deformation and packing the clusters in the UV area. This will be your task in the next movie.